In this video, we will talk about LLDB. LLDB stands for Link Layer Discovery Protocol. It's used by network devices such as routers, switches for announcing their identity and capabilities. LLDB can accurately discover information about connected peers and interfaces of the connected peers. In this example, LLDB works between Nipuring network devices, Nipuring routers, R1 sends LLDB message to R2, R2 does same, and also on the link between R2 and R3, they start to discover each other using LLDB protocol. Each router starts to send information about its identity, its capability, like system name and platform type capability states that it's a router and many other information so R2 can collect all this information about its neighboring router. LLDB is defined in IEEE 802.1ab. LLDB is an open standard protocol. LLDB operates at the data link layer doesn't require layer 3 connectivity between peers. It operates only at layer 2, data link layer. This is the frame structure of LLDB. It consists of preamble, the start of frame to synchronize with the receiver, and it has the destination MAC address, source MAC address, ether type, and it has LLDB TLVs to send the information of LLDB to peers, chassis ID, port ID, and TTL. And it has another optional TLVs, and it has optional end of LLDB TLV, and finally the FCS or frame check sequence to check on errors. Destination MAC address is a multicast MAC address. It's a special multicast MAC address, not to be forwarded. It's just used to receive the LLDB message. The destination MAC address can be this address or same as this port and 03 or 00. The source MAC address, MAC address of the source interface from which the LLDB frame is transmitted. Ether type is 88. C C Chassis ID is type 1 Port ID TLV is type 2 TTL TLV is type 3 LLDB frame starts with the mandatory TLVs Chassis ID, Port ID and Time to Live TLV The mandatory TLV can be followed by any number of optional TLVs the Optional TLV can be port description, system or system name, system description, system capabilities, management address, and any custom TLVs. These are all the TLVs that can be contained in the LLDB Ethernet frame structure, so the peers can discover information about the sending device. Information that can be collected by LLDB, system name, system description, which is vendor platform, and chassis type, port ID and description, management IP address, capabilities supported, capability of the connected peer, router, switch, IP phone, and so on, VLAN information, such as ID and name, link aggregation, information if the connected peer can support link aggregation and if the connected interface configured with link aggregation or not in this lab we have pe1 router is connected to p1 and p1 is connected to pe2 pe1 can discover information about p1 and the same for p1 can discover information about pe1 on these interfaces Ethernet 
101 from PE1 and Ethernet 101 from P1 as long as LLB is enabled on these interfaces and same for the connection between P1 and PE2 Display LLB local displays information about the local device chassis type, chassis ID, system name, system description, VRP information and version, router platform, system capabilities supported LLDB uptime, local interfaces that works with LLDB, interface Ethernet 100, 101, 102 and so on. In the current configuration file of PE1 we can find that LLDB is configured by default. At the end of the configuration file, with command LLDB enable, we can easily display LLDB enable command from the current configuration file by selecting command LLDB enable or LLDB only. Display LLDB Nipper displays the Nippers discovered on PE1 device. First interface 100. It detects one Nipper. This Nipper has this chassis type, this chassis ID. Port ID is 101. This is on the discovered Nipper. The system name of the Nipper device is P1, and this is the system description and the VRP information, device platform, device capability, management address type is IPv4, management address, this address, port VLAN ID, VLAN name, if configured, it states its name, link aggregation supported, yes, link aggregation is enabled, no, all of this information can be discovered from EE1 side, we have interface, 100 configured with IP address 10.11.11.1 and from P1 side interface Ethernet 101 is configured with 10.11.11.2 they can ping each other PE1 side is pingable from PE1 we can discover this peer using command display LLDB neighbor and interface Ethernet 100 can discover P1 device, the neighboring device interface is Ethernet 101. As we said, LLDB doesn't require layer 3 configuration. If we remove the IP address 10.11.11.2, we cannot ping PE1 device, but the LLDB protocol is still working. PE1 and P1 routers can still discover each other. Let's try that. At PE1 interface Ethernet 101 undo IP address commit to apply changes display this there is no IP address and ping again PE1 device we cannot ping now because there is no layer 3 configuration at PE1 we can use command again display LLB Nipper and the Nipper is still coming we can still receive P1 and the Nippering device interface is Ethernet 101 LLDB is enabled by default on Huawei devices it can be a potential security issue especially if enabled between two different domains or two different organizations if we have two different organizations it's highly recommended to disable LLDB between them to disallow the Nippur discovery now we are on the interface view of Ethernet 101 at P1 I will use command undo LLDB enable commit to apply this change now back to PE1 again and use command display LLDB neighbor we cannot find any neighbor on interface 100 
connected to P1. Because LLDB messages stopped from being sent from P1 to PE1. Now PE1 is not able to collect any information about P1. This is what we should do between devices that are connected to external entities. Thank you for viewing this video. I hope it can add a good value to you.